Maybe you're just starting off in Minecraft, or maybe you're just starting off a new world and you are a veteran, but you want some more ideas. Here are four super duper simple starter farms that you should build in your world. Starting off, or we have some farms that are gonna be, you know, item farms or block farms, but we gotta start with the food farms. Obviously, this is an automatic food harvesting farm. It's one of the most old school designs that I know. In fact, I remember building this type of design right when I started playing Minecraft. Obviously, it used a little bit different mechanics, but as you can see, uh, harvesting this farm is incredibly fast and I was able to pick up all of that wheat in seconds and now I have an inventory full of items. The biggest downside to this farm is replanting. You have to replant manually. The way it works is it uses trapdoors at the back of the farm and whenever you open up a trapdoor, the water that if it's you know a waterlogged trapdoor will escape out of the side that is open, causing the water to flow. And so here we are using perfectly spaced water to uh, make sure that it pushes all of the items over here. We're using another uh, water uh, pusher basically to push it down to an easy to collect spot and all is good as you can see these materials are super duper simple also you can tile this design so here we have four different types of farms and because water flows downhill we can set this off and as the water flows, it will pick up steam every time it drops a block. And all of these items, all four of these farms, will eventually make their way down to the bottom. And once again, the biggest bummer with this farm is replanting. It is, uh, it's not super uh, easy to plant immediately. But there you go, as you can see, we got beetroot, potato, carrots, and we also had some wheat in that farm as well. So, how do we make it? Here are the required materials, not in exact amounts. You'll need some building blocks, can really be anything, some redstone dust, depending on how large you make the farm. You may or may not need a redstone repeater, at least one lever, four, or sorry, eight trap doors, a hoe, however many seeds you want to plant, and at least two buckets of water. So start off by finding an open space or going ahead and building one. Next, you need to decide if you want this to be a single layer farm or a multi-tier farm. I'm going to go ahead and make a multi-tier farm and then kind of point out where the differences are if you just want to make this single layer farm. The first step is to build a trough and we're going to build it eight across. So I've just destroyed four and four more. So that is eight across. This area is going to be where the farm land actually is. And if you're building a single layer farm, go ahead and count out eight. My random tick speed is super high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, that this is for a, uh, a single layer farm. If you count out eight, this, this eighth block is going to be where you put down your planks. If you're building a multi layer farm, that eighth block is going to be farmland, and you're going to start your next layer of farmland on the ninth block. So uh, keep that in mind. So uh, this is going to all be farmland. In order to keep it farmland and not uh, keep disappearing into dirt like this, we need to water it. So break one of the blocks uh, in the middle. It needs to be one of the ones in the middle. Put down some water. Walk over to the other side and remember that this is all going to be farmland about four blocks in. And uh, it does have some leeway, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, you put down your water. And then if you want to, you can make this into farmland right now. Uh, or you can uh, wait because we may accidentally you know, step on this and whatnot and cause it back uh, to dirt. So now it is time to make our next layer. And this layer is going to only be six deep. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So that is how deep that layer is going to be. And then we'd fill this in. 
you don't have to make all of this farmland. Uh, you could save that step for later if you are worried that you're gonna like jump on it and turn it into dirt, uh, but you could. Next, we're gonna start on the next layer. That's gonna go right after the farmland. And this can be seven blocks deep. Seven blocks is the maximum. Uh, you can do less if you're building in a uh, ref uh, like a smaller area, but seven blocks is uh, is the minimum or is the maximum, I should say. You could build less if you had a smaller area, but seven blocks is the maximum. And then you can build it up again if you would like. So we could make another layer, uh, or we could go ahead and stop there. And we're gonna go ahead and stop there. Uh, and if the next layer, it, had, it should be seven, and then whatever your last layer also needs to be seven. Uh, once we're finished, we're gonna have an area for the water, and the water would be in the eighth block area. So we're gonna put down this uh, wood. It doesn't have to be wood, but we're gonna throw down some wood. We're also going to give a trough to all of this, because as the water flows, we don't want it to flow off the side of our farm. So I'm gonna put down a temporary block, and we are going to build a uh, basically a, a rail system here. And we haven't put down the water for this other farm yet, uh, so don't forget that. Somewhere near the middle, go ahead and put down, uh, you can either put down some blocks and then throw you know some water in there and then throw a uh, block down there. And then on the other side here, you can see there's water right there. I decided to use trapdoors on this one just because it looked fancy, uh, but that's it. So continue with your railing, including uh, the space behind where the water will go. One tip is I noticed that uh, on this build, I didn't do it, but uh, sometimes the water flows and items will get caught right there. So I'm gonna extend that railing by two blocks just to make sure that doesn't happen. Now it is time to grab our uh, trapdoors. And these can be any type of, of trapdoor. And all you have to do is make sure you're facing towards where the water will eventually flow and then put down the trapdoor. The reason we're facing this way is because that will ensure that when you open the trapdoor, it'll open away from you. They'll, it'll always open up in the way away that you're facing if you're clicking on the ground like this. So we're gonna wanna make sure that all of these are open. Then we can add our water. And this will work like a normal water source block even though it doesn't flow. So if I put water here, that will end up becoming a water source, which is kind of nice. And so uh, you really only need two water buckets in order to pull it all off. Now that we have water, do we have water on this side? No, no we're gonna add some water on this side. Now that we have water on this side, we're going to make all of this farmland and we are gonna hook up our redstone. The way I'm gonna do that is throw down a lever over here and turn it on, then put down your redstone dust, and this distance is so long that we are going to need to repeat it. So right here, you can see there's no particles coming off of this redstone. There are particles coming off of this one, so this is where we need to add a repeater. So pick up the one that isn't lit, put down a repeater, and then continue on. And this is gonna go all the way across our, uh, just up, up behind the blocks that have the uh, the trapdoors on them. And now when we turn this off, the trapdoors will open. And when we have it on, the trapdoors will be up. So when it's off, all the water flows. The final step is to add water over on this side and it'll flow over there and that'll just be chilling there for forever. And then we're also just going to, oh, <laughs> I just got that advancement. Uh, we are going to actually put down the crops in our farm that we want to grow. This is very therapeutic, just putting down crops. What am I, a farmer? What is this, a farmland? Perfect, done. Now you're gonna wait for this to grow and uh, then uh, once it's all grown, you just flip this switch. The water will flow down. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Oops, the doodle do. And I didn't do my math correctly. Uh, that is because water flows a total of eight blocks. So including the source and then an, an extra seven. So that is a total of eight. And I built this seven blocks and then had the eighth block as uh, the place for the water. But we needed to go over the edge. So I needed to remove one block. Luckily, this farm is pretty forgiving. All I'll have to do is shift this over one. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on so we get rid of the water. We can pull all of this up and now it'll fall. So I'll just need to uh, fit that in there. I'll also need to make this farmland. 
And hopefully our water is uh, close enough to that. Uh, it needs to be within four blocks of that. There we go. It looks like that is working. And then same thing over here is that this will have to be moved one block back. And I'll just have to, I filled that in with dirt, put that there. All good to go now. Uh, and so if you do that, that's what happens. So now as it flows, it'll go over that edge and then pop all of those off. And on this one, we do want it to be that eight because we don't want it to flow over into our diagonal. If this wasn't here, if this uh, diagonal flowing water wasn't there, the water would just stop right at the edge. So it will stop there and push all of the items over the edge. With that diagonal water there, it makes it look like it's connected, but it actually isn't connected. But it will continue to push all the items there and then push all the items over into the corner just for easy collection. If for some reason this is freaking you out, you actually don't need that. And you can just walk along the, the, the bottom, the trough, to collect all of your items. Moving on to the next farm. And this is a very, very simple cobblestone farm. Now, cobblestone farms have been around forever. Uh, a lot of people use them in skyblock situations because you don't have a lot of blocks. But if you're someone who doesn't want to go underground and go caving and go strip mining, and you just need a whole bunch of cobble to AFK, this is the thing. You just like tape down your mouse and mine cobble for days. It's fantastic. Here's how it works. I'm going to switch myself into survival mode. Here's all you need to make it. I'm going to give myself a humble netherite pickaxe. And all I have to do is stand right here and mine. And eventually this lava will pop over and I'll be able to pick up the cobble just like you see. And super, super duper simple. Takes up at most five blocks. Uh, it really looks like it only takes up three, but this is technically a block right here. And uh, it's amazing. So we can even automate it just a step a, a little bit more, but I'm gonna show you how to make it. This is what is required. All you need is one cobble stair, really any stair, uh, some trap doors, six trap doors, water, and a lava bucket. And here's how it works. We're gonna put down an area for us to stand in. Then I'm gonna put down a trap door facing towards that hole that we just made. So we can walk up that trap door if we want. Around the edge of that, we're gonna put, oh sorry, the stairs. Uh, around the edge of that, we're gonna put down our trap doors. And then over here, around air, we're gonna put down our other trap doors. Now we take our water and we're gonna waterlog this stair. Then we're gonna put down our lava bucket inside of those trap doors. The lava is gonna flow here, even though this is contained by the stair, the flowing lava sees the block next to it as water. So it will turn into cobblestone, allowing us to just stand here and mine this up. So that's the total build. Now, as you noticed, sometimes, maybe you just noticed, sometimes like, the cobble does flow into the lava. It pops out and then like lands itself into the lava. Uh, that's not that big of a deal. You can automate this a little bit by removing these three blocks down here taking your chest and then adding it whoops over on this side and i accidentally held down shift when i clicked that one so it didn't join up there we go now take a hopper and click that chest and now the hopper will be able to pick up the cobblestone every once in a while uh, and and still uh, it'll pick it up a lot more efficiently than than the player will and also it'll stop it from go into that lava a little bit more often and you have a better chance. So now you could just sit here and look over there and just mine and you could tape down your controller or tape down your mouse. And speaking of controllers, I did test this in Bedrock Edition. So here we are in Bedrock Edition of the game. I have my netherite pick here. We have a pig on the other side here, uh, <laughs> which is a little bit ridiculous. He's, Kind of checking me out there, but it does work. Also, for some reason, the like randomness of when the lava flows seems to be a little bit faster. Sometimes it goes fast, sometimes it goes slow. It's kind of all over the place. Now, one thing I have noticed, 
It is very weird that it happened four times, but uh, this lava does set things on fire, even non-flammable things over here on the Bedrock edition of the game. Um, so be aware that even if it is non-flammable around that lava, it will still catch on fire, which I didn't notice happening on the Java edition. But everything here works on the Bedrock version. Next, this is one of the farms that I always build always on uh, in my world it is so simple but really really effective and cactus green can be so annoying to get if you are trying to make some green dyed thing and you forget oh my gosh i gotta go harvest some cactus uh, it can be really 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 annoying so i love setting this stuff up early in my game so that i always have cactus green if i need it later and this is one of those things you just leave in a corner and forget about it and then you've been playing your game for hours and hours and you're like oh yeah i need the cactus screen you come over and you're like oh my gosh i can't believe how much has been created in that amount of time that i was just playing and then you uh you, you take it out so uh it works using a really interesting behavior of cactus and that is that cactus cannot be next to something i guess because cactus is spiky and like theoretically it spikes like go into the block next to it so if it exists with a block nearby and i don't have a block here let me go grab uh, a little bit of the cobble i just made i put it in here uh, if we put a block in between these cactus like a so you'll notice that those cactus break so how we have this set up is that the cactus, once it grows, it'll grow into a space that has a block next to it, and then that will cause the cactus to break. And like I said, very, very simple farm. To build this yourself, this is really all you need. You just need some type of building block. It does not need to be planks. You need at least four oak fence. I have six here to make my building a little bit easier. Four sand. Oh, only four cactus. I don't know how I ended up getting five. A hopper and, oh, just a chest. I grabbed a tra trap chest from my creative inventory, uh, but you just need a chest. So find an open area and go ahead and put down one sand, two sand, three sand, and four sand. Then on either side, you just need to put down five blocks of uh, any type of block. It does not have to be wood like I have here. And then on this last wall, you're going to leave one gap. Then we can take water, put it in the corner a, a, on the other side of that gap, and you'll see that it all flows to this perfect situation right here. We're going to remove both of those, put down our chest. Like I said, it doesn't need to be a trap chest. Put down our hopper, and now all the items will flow right there, which is exactly what we want. Now we can put down our cactus. One, two, three, four. We're going to put down our oak fence. One, two, three three and i'm gonna go and grab these bottom ones like that and all we need are the four on uh in between these two cactus so one two three and four we can remove that center post if we want so i'll just pop that out and it'll flow down here and be picked up by our hopper and you're done and that is it. So over time, as cactus naturally grows, it will grow. Notice that there is a block in the way, then break and flow into this hopper. In fact, I just realized that this is redundant. We don't even need this or this because either of those two will teach, you know, if this grows, it'll hit there, 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 there. It all works out. So you only need two oak fence which is kind of incredible. So I love making this early in my world so that I can have cactus whenever I need it. Next, we have a very simple XP and gold farm. This is best to set up in the nether wastes in a big, big area with a lot of pigmen if you can make that happen. And it works like this. First, you anger a pigmen. Then, as quickly as you can, get to your little base and chill out right here in this area. The pigmen will come from all over and try to get to you, but they will fall into this trough right here. And hopefully we won't get attacked by a, uh, a ghast, which I can, I can see over there. Once you're happy with however many pigmen you have, head down and then you can kill them. And they're loud, holy moly.
There we go. And uh, this is how you'll get gold, you'll get experience, and hopefully more pigmen will come and attack you while you're you're down here. And uh, as you can see, they can't hit you, but you can use this as a very easy starter experience farm, which is fantastic. And then once they're all dead, give it just like a little bit, and um, hopefully no pigmen will, will be mad at you. Pigmen do have like a little countdown. Um, on their aggro so if you kill them all there's a good chance that you can uh, get away scot-free without uh, angering or getting you know having to deal with with any angry pigment around do i see any i don't see any are you guys mad doesn't look like it see we got away with it we got away with it eight levels some gold uh that's very very nice so here is what you need in order to build it first you'll need a pick which i don't have in my inventory but you'll need some type of building block some amount so like eight ladders at most uh some crimson trapdoor or any type of trapdoor and then at least six slabs of any type of slab so like I said, a big open area with lots of pigmen and lots of ways for pigmen to get to you is is perfect. We're just going to, you know, build it right next to the other one that we had. First step is to go down by uh, three, by two, by three. So one, two, three. There we go. That is the hole that we want to make. Now, I'd like to do this mentally because then we're going to have to go down another two, but this two, we're going to have one wider than the hole we just made so it's the same three by two oops of course we're in the nether and i'm in creative so i can just fly away from that lava All right, so it's the same as the two by three that we just made except we're going to extend this wall so that we have a walkway all the way around it next add a little platform in the center so right where that hole comes down that's where the platform's going to be and then add your six slabs on top of of that so that thing even babies can't get through that half block space now we're going to choose a side doesn't matter really which side unless you have like a big area on on one side like a hill on one side then maybe build it on the opposite side um but then we're just going to add our ladder so we're just going to go up until we get to the surface now we're going to make a chamber for us to stand on so make sure that it's at least two blocks away from that hole and if you have anything else around it make sure that nothing can climb up onto uh onto that area that that we're on I'm going to make this a three by three and then make sure you extend your ladder up and now go ahead and build a wall on uh, three corners, three sides of, of that. So now we have a two high wall surrounded us and we have a little place, place to stand, jump out of there. And then on this edge, we're going to add two blocks. On this edge, we're going to add two blocks. And that's because we're going to add some trap doors. And we don't want the pig, uh, the pig, zombified piglins uh, to step on top of that trap door. So we want to make sure that is blocked off from them to use. And remember, if you have anything like some, some, uh, some natural hill that reaches right up to it, now the pig lens can jump on this and try to get to you so make sure that you either break off any uh, hill next door that's uh, you know less than too high or extend all of your walls up so either of those will work so we put down three trapdoors on this side three trapdoors on this side open those up the pigs ai will think that those are full blocks try to get to you and then fall down here and be trapped now you need to make sure that you have a way to get into your own little base and since they can't climb ladders we're going to add ladders to the edges and just make sure you have a, an easy way to get over here to climb up and uh, then you can stand here as the aggroed piglins come this way fall in there then you use the ladders to head down and kill, kill, kill. Remember that a sword has a little bit of sweeping edge. Even if you don't have the sweeping edge enchantment on it, it will uh, use a little bit of sweeping edge and uh, kill those piglins. And a axe does not. An axe would be an individual thing. And also, if you are doing a critical hit, uh, it would not have any type of sweeping edge effect. And I did try this over here on the bedrock edition of the game. Uh, I had a, a much, I built it right next to this uh, stronghold. 
I guess, uh, a fortress, another fortress. And uh, I've had a heck of a time with mobs. So what I said earlier about building this in a big open area with lots of piglin and not much else, uh, really take that to heart. Uh, try to build in the most open area without any other type of mob being able to spawn because all these other mobs are throwing off the mob caps. They're shooting stuff over at me and trying to kill me. And uh, it, it's not very efficient. So build it in a much more efficient spot. But it does work over here on the bedrock version of the game. And there you have it, a food farm, a cobblestone farm, a cactus farm, and a golden experience farm. All so simple to make. None of the materials, except for maybe a hopper, but come on, you can get a little bit of iron and a chest. Uh, that is like the most in, uh, intensive building block for these farms. No redstone, really. I mean, other than maybe the switch and the repeater that I had in the first one. But I mean, no complicated redstone. All of this is so simple to make. So get to it and build these in your world. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Also, make sure you subscribe for future videos and also leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about the video. We'll see you on another one. Bye!